American football in Finland. The voice in your ears, Perfect Purvis, and welcome to another episode of American Football in Finland. I'm here with my co-host, Q Floyd. What's going on, people? And we have a great show lined up for you today. But before we get into it, last week, Coach Q was out here in Finland living his best life. Tell us about the weekend, Q. Oh, man, it was a good weekend, man. Good weekend of football. It was nice to see a lot of the old guys and my friends. I've seen some new babies around there. Um, The weather was great compared to Qatar. Man, it was was a good trip. It was well worth it. I'm glad you had a good time. But I also had a good time feeling this weekend. Y'all know it was the 4th of July. That was on Thursday. I celebrated. I don't know if you, if you follow my Instagram, you've seen. We had, we had ribs. We had sausages. We had uh, pork, pork steaks. We had chicken steaks. What else I had? I think I had some bacon in there. Uh, we had, oh, yeah, we had hamburgers, obviously, because, you know, that's America. I put down on the grill, and it was glorious. And then... Watched some football games, obviously, but on Sunday had another Fourth of July um, celebration with some Americans that live here in Lati, and that was even more glorious. Just a really good weekend outside of just football. But getting back to football, it was Championship Weekend internationally. Got to see the Italy Championship. Got to see the Norway Championship. Got a little bit of highlights from Sweden. So. I mean, just a, a great weekend, Fourth of July weekend, just like you're supposed to have it. Damn it. And if y'all seen us on on the internet, me and Q got caught on the internet at the game and uh, the <laughs> caption, you know, Q didn't look as, as impressed as he should have to watch that uh, first game on Thursday. But Not rest- at all. <laughs> but the rest of the weekend picked up. <laughs> game balls. First thing, game balls. Let's give out a few game balls from last weekend. Who impressed you this week, Q? Um, it wasn't just a single person. Um, honestly, it was it was the Roosters' defense. Oh, yeah. um, no American import on the Roosters' defense at all. Why I said that is because they went against a lot of Americans at on least the Wolverines' five, offense. Right? One, at least five. Two, um, yeah. And they handled it. They handled it the best way they knew how. Coach Collie had a great scheme. Um, the guys pretty much got pressure pretty much any time they wanted to. I think more than anything, they exposed the Wolverines' offensive line. Which we already knew what you know weren't that what great. It is. Yep. Um, but I, I give the game ball to to the Helsinki Wolver. Uh, I mean the Helsinki Roosters defense. Um, those guys played a fantastic game. I want to do the same thing, but I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the game ball to an individual. Somebody that stood out to me this weekend was uh, running back Christian Powell from the the San Diego Crocodiles. Uh, the reason he stood out to me was his his tenacity and his ability to carry a game. Uh, the Crocodiles, they let the Royals off the hook. They should have destroyed the Royals. But time and time again, they made mistakes. They had a fumble that got scooped up for a touchdown on a bad pitch because they do so much offensively. But when it all came down to it, Christian Powell had the ball. He had 23 carries in the game. And they made sure that he dictated the pace of the game. And he did what Christian Powell does. He breaks tackles. He gets yards. He scores touchdowns. He's he's getting the game ball for me because I'm just impressed that he can do it so consistently on a team that has other weapons, but he's the the constant. No matter how good those receivers and Jonathan Baker are on offense, Christian Powell is what makes the Crocodiles run. So he gets the game ball for me this week. That's that's the Christian Powell everybody is used to. That's yep. the Christian Powell everybody wants to see. He 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 was. He, I seen a flash of how he was playing last year. This last game, like this dude was. Strong, he ran hard, he broke tackles, he caught the ball. Like, this is the Christian Powell that'll get the Crocs a long way. So, so I definitely agree with you on that one. And, and just last thing, I know it's two different teams, but most of his, like, that, that one long run he had last year, he broke 85 tackles. It was against the Royals. Just saying. Maybe they don't know how to <laughs> tackle the guy. <laughs> Inside the numbers. Here are the top performances for Maple League teams from this weekend. The Helsinki Roosters defeated the Helsinki Wolverines 42-13. All the top players were from the Helsinki Roosters. Running back Young Kari had 35 carries for 222 yards rushing. He also had a 6-yard reception for a touchdown. 
Wide receiver Namdi Agude had eight receptions for 160 yards and two touchdowns. Wide receiver Adam Connett had seven receptions for 127 yards and three touchdowns. And of course, quarterback Muriel Cadmary had a day. He was 23 for 42 for 56% completion, had 367 yards, and threw for six touchdowns. On the defensive side, young Ville Limpinen had five tackles and four pass breakups. For the second game of the weekend, the Crocodiles defeated the Wassel Royals 34-27. to uh, For the Crocodiles, they had a lot of impact players. Christian Running back Christian Powell had 23 rushes for 234 yards and two touchdowns. Wide receiver Spencer Cudlin threw one pass for 71 yards and one touchdown. And on the defensive side, linebacker Jaska Vadenen had 10.5 tackles and one sack. The Royals had one major performer, and that was young Nicolt, who had five receptions for 105 yards. The third game of the weekend was the Porvo Butchers versus the Tampa the Saints. The Butchers won 27-14 to and had two key performers. Running back Dayton Wynn had 32 rushes for 207 yards and two touchdowns. He also had three receptions for 33 yards and another touchdown, totaling on 230 all-purpose yards and three total touchdowns. Uh, for the defense for the Butchers, linebacker Kenneth Bradley had 10.5 tackles and 2.5 and tackles for a loss. And that's your key performance from week six of the Maple League. All right, so first game of the weekend. Let's just get this out the way. The one that we talked about the most. I mean, we can still talk about it a lot, but who knows how much you actually need to talk about it. The Roosters destroyed the Wolverines 42-13. to What are your first thoughts on it, Q? Uh, my first thoughts on the game, obviously I picked the Wolverines to win. I thought um, it would be hard for the Roosters to match up um, against that, against those players. And I mean, Anybody that knows football would just probably say the same thing. Um, but the Roosters had other plans. Uh, Miro actually had a good game. Young Kari, man, mm. I think 220-something yards, man. 222? They gashed him. They gashed him. 35 um, I, carries. I actually knew that the Roosters were going to come out and run Kari. I mean, it's the smartest thing to do. Try to get the run game going. Keep them off Keep yeah, them off the field. Um, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, I've seen some of the plays that the Roosters made were just incredible. It was like championship plays. Like, they just couldn't get off the field on third down sometimes. They made they, – they looked like a polished, mm-hmm. hell, you know, champion team. You know, yeah. like different players, but – at the end of the day, the Roosters still have that grit. They still have that we we ready to show up and play against anybody. And I think that showed in this game. Um, on the other side, the Wolverines, uh, I think the first few games were, were so easy that maybe they came into this game thinking that, oh, everything will just go that way and we don't really have to do much. So, yeah, basically the, the, the Roosters put a, a well, you know, put together game on both sides of the ball. Miro threw the ball well. They made his receivers make some big plays this game. Wolverines had some, uh, I don't even know if I should call them breakdowns in the defense. I mean, if you watch the film, if you're man covered and your guy comes off the balls and runs the routes, you you have to guard him. Like, there's nobody else behind you. There's nobody else who's going to do it. Um, I think the Wolverines defensively have to come together and have to play play as a unit. Right now, they're not doing that. This last game uh, maybe was a punch in the mouth for them. And maybe now they'll, you know, come together and play like they should with, with the type of talent they have. Um, they have a big game against Corpio next week, um, so they they have to you know forget about this one. But and, and on the other 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 note, the, uh, the Roosters did what they had to do. They came to to the Wolverines' home and they made it their home. So it was a good game for the Roosters. I ain't holding back no punches. I'm gonna say it like this: Wolverines got embarrassed, and if they don't feel embarrassed, then they they ain't playing the game right. I'm going to say this first before I say whatever the hell else I'm about to say. I ain't got it scripted. I ain't even got no notes on this. The most talented team did not win that game, but the best team did win that game. And you know what they say, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. This is what That's what this game looked like. You got a team full of talent in the Wolverines, but they can't get it together. And then you got a team that's, okay, Maybe they're they're not no bums over there in the, for the Helsinki Roosters. God damn it, they're good, best domestic players in the league most likely. But they honestly don't have the same talent level the Wolverines. 
But what they do have is a consistent coaching staff, players who've been playing together, and their chemistry is clicking at the right time. And they're working on a plan. When you watch this game, offensively, fucking Miko Korkalainen fucking all held this guy for this game. And the reason I'm saying that is if, if you saw this game, that offense, it was ran with purpose. Mm-hmm. There, you could see that every play they did, there was a reason why they did it, when they did it, and how they did it. And then they executed it. And that's on the players. Obviously, Miro executed really well. You know, Adam Connett made the plays he needed to. Young Kari did his motherfucking thing as usual. The difference between them and the Wolverines was that on the other side of the ball, where you have all this talent, all this raw talent, Honestly, I always thought that, you know, you got this many Americans on this side of the ball that they're going to be smart enough to figure some stuff out. And that's what it looked like that the Wolverines defense never did. They never figured it out. Now, I, I, just to touch off what you said, uh, they never figured it out. It's a, it's a thing, you know, uh, when you're playing man-to-man, um, all the prior games to that, I think uh, I can't name a receiver that was just, dominant that they played against Mm -mm. um so it was it was hard to measure what your dbs really could do you know people Mm -hmm. only really respect good players when they play against other good players i think you live by something you die for die by it and i think the wolverines i think like the man coverage is cool but at the same time you you're playing man for a reason that means you're expecting a certain route or that you're getting pressure if, even if you're not getting pressure, right? Like, say, if you're playing man, somebody's blitzing, whatever. Yeah. If if I'm playing man at a DB, there is only one or two routes you can run on me, sir. Yeah. I'm if, a, I, if, I, if I have any confidence in the blitzing, you're going to run a fade or you're going to run a slant. And you know within one second whether the receiver is going to run the fade or a slant. The, the, uh, the Wolverines DBs did not play the fade well at all. They didn't play man-to-man well at all. Um, so it was hard once the once the running game got on. It was hard for the Wolverines DBs to even be comfortable. Um, they just didn't make the plays that everybody expected them to make. Like you said, it was it was it was a reminder that teamwork over individual talents don't really it doesn't have a chance. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like individual talent doesn't have a chance when a team is is playing together. If the Wolverines can play together, if they will, when they will, then we could you know it might be a different game, but. If they continue to play like this selfishly, you know, guys blowing assignments, like it's too far in the season for this to still be happening. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a big game. No matter how, how anybody looks at it, it can say it was another game. This was a big game. Um, the, the Roosters, I think they expected to win this game when they showed up. Oh, of That's course. Just the type of team. That's yeah. just the type of team when they were. Um, not saying that they are just a dominant team because obviously we've seen games where you just like, any like the Crocs game, the Crocs could have won that game. We seen them get beat by Corpio. And I'm, Corpio I'm, like I'm gonna jump in. Team. I honestly believe that on the field, these two teams are actually more similar than we think. But this game was about planning and preparation. The Roosters were ready and prepared for the Wolverines. The Wolverines were not prepared for what happened to them in this game. And it showed. I, I think they I think they were prepared. I think they were prepared. It's just executing it <laughs> was the, well, was the problem. Okay, like, well there you, you go. If you're, you're going, right. if you're going, going, you know what they're going to do. You know what they're going to um, do. Every both coach, teams know that. Yeah, you both, you, you know what they're going to do. So you have to be ready to make the adjustments. At the end of the day, it's about film. It's about is this guy winning the battle against the other guy? And if you watch that film, um, the Roosters won majority of those battles, and that's why they made the plays they made. They didn't do much in the second half, but they didn't have to. Yeah, Miro got it, yeah. Miro got comfortable in the pocket. He moved well. He threw the ball well. His, I mean, a few of the times, his receivers was wide open. <laughs> like so, was, he didn't even. Yeah, that uh, a lot. You know, f- free safeties uh, for the Wolverines biting on a five yard hitch that has a linebacker under him. Like this is just this is mental mistakes. Like like Miro isn't isn't he doesn't have the big hands to do a real pump fake. So mm-hmm. what are you biting on? He's oh, not, he, oh, he do that whole, like, shoulder thing he with his He do a face, shoulder though. fake. He's doing a shoulder <laughs> fake. So it was like, it, this was just mental stuff that I, I expect more out of American DBs. Um, I'm not taking anything away from what the Roosters did. They came and, and showed up. I made sure I let a lot of my friends on the Wolverines know how I felt about that game. Like, those, they beat y'all. They, like, literally beat y'all. Like, it yeah. wasn't no, no really excuse. You can't, you can't go out there and think you're going to just throw fade routes and go routes on everybody, like, 
You have to open up the playbook. Have to throw, if they're if they're getting pressure like that, you have to adjust. You have to be able to, to get those bubbles. You got to be able to. You got to do something to get the ball in your player's that, hand. There's I think no you said it best when you said adjust. Like it just seemed like yeah. the Wolverines never adjusted to what was happening, both offense and defense. Like they're playing man, but for some reason they want to play press man. And when they get beat over and over, they don't change it. They stay in it. And then on offense, yeah. you're going three and out because you're not winning the one-on-one matchups like you normally do. Nothing is wide open. Uh, the run game can't get started because they physically are better up front. But there was no adjustment. We just said, you know what? There, it got to a point where literally Rojo was on first and second down just throwing deep balls to either RJ or Sid, and you could call the play. You'd have RJ in the yeah. slot, and you're like, they're going to run a wheel route, and he's going to throw it out there, and he would. Or they or they have said on one, one side by himself, he's going to run a fade, and he's going to throw it out there. Like They just kind of went away from what they do. And kind of going back to what we talked about last week, that's how you beat the Wolverines. Like you said, the, the, the blueprint for beating the Wolverines is to score on them and make their offense work. Because you can see in this game that when that offense wasn't – ahead in the game and didn't have as many options as they wanted to, they kind of they shut down and said, fuck it, we're just going to try to beat you with our talent. And against a team like, I mean, pretty much almost anybody but the Roosters, that might work. But it's not going to work against this defensive unit that Kyle Carpenter has put together and is looking fucking outstanding. And, I mean, we're talking too long in this. So I ain't going to drone on. But I do want to say one last thing. And I'll let mm-hmm. y'all guys go. We always talk long we talk Helsinki teams. One thing I want to say is, y'all take it easy on my boy Eric Irvin, okay? I'm, I'm saying this because it needs to be said. Because I've been hearing a lot of trash talk about, ooh, that number 37, or he was this, he was that, da da da. Okay, let's get it straight. The man playing press man, he was in very good coverage for most of the game, and he was getting beat on catches that we haven't seen. Um, Namdi Agude, great receiver. This was his coming out party. I've never seen him catch passes like he caught in that game. And a lot of them was on Irvin. So everyone is kind of saying, oh, well, he got beat. Duh, duh. Yeah, you get beat. A corner's going to get beat. But also, you got to put your corner in a situation not to get beat that often. And that's what the Wolverines didn't do is they made sure that, hey, if you're getting beat, you're going to keep getting beat because we ain't going to change it. So just want to let everybody know, y'all leave Eric the fuck alone. He did his thing. Yeah. He had ten and a half tackles in the game. Shit, he did, he didn't give up a lot of. I don't think he gave up any touchdowns actually. But yeah. Nandi had a hell of a game. That's where the credit really needs to go. It's not that the guy he was going against sucked. Nandi played as like one of the best receivers in the league this year. And you'll see when the Wolverines go back and play other teams that Irvin can do his thing and can shut down most receivers in this league. So I just want to let that be known that y'all need to get off the motherfucking back, okay? I think I think if if anybody feels a certain way, I know I heard a lot of people talking about Eric and they shouldn't sign him, yeah, and they should let him go. Uh, if you felt that way about Eric before this game, then you're a hater. Yeah. If you feel this way about it because of this game, you're definitely a hater. Yeah, um, exactly. One game because don't make nobody. I think Eric Irvin had a had a had a uh, I wouldn't say a bad game. Not Every either. DB goes through this. Every DB goes through this. Um, Namdi came to play. He probably boosted his stock up a little more when it comes to American you know, receivers, period, um, mm-hmm. because I have never seen him do anything like this. Maybe he crazy. knows it. I mean, like maybe Miko seen something in him when he was recruiting him, but actually when they signed him, I, I didn't know where this came from. I was just like, maybe they know something I don't, but you know, I thought it was a lot better receivers to get. This game showed me why. Um, he took over. He made plays on whatever DB was on him. The crazy part, Eric Irvin didn't have the worst game as a DB as as somebody else did on the Wolverines. <laughs> um, so yeah, <laughs> in compared to in to the game that Eric had to the other DB, um, you know, you guys, Eric tried his hardest. You know, what I mean, sometimes it just it doesn't go your way. Sometimes you make those plays, but then you have sometimes the guys just have great games. And I think Nami just had a great game. And there's nothing you could you could do about that. He was just on. He caught everything. Yeah, Literally I mean, everything and half of the balls like, he caught. Eric made a play on the ball. Like, you can't ask for anything other than that. You win some, you lose some. And that's all it was for him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think this the next time these two teams play, it won't it won't be like that. 
I think that uh, the Wolverines will make the adjustments they need to be they need to have. It'll be later on in the season, and uh, then I think we'll get a fair judge of of, of, of these two teams uh, when they match up as far as playoff wise. Yeah, I mean, it looks like we're gonna see them play another two times, anyways, right? Yeah, so yeah, we'll see. But let's let's get to the next game. Crocodiles defeat the Royals thirty four to twenty seven. What are your thoughts on that, Q? Ooh, crocodiles look real good. Coach Mattingly, congratulations, man. Um, the Crocs. Uh, I honestly feel like the Crocs are getting better every week. Think so? Um, huh? Offensively, right. there. I, I think so. I mean, like they might not win every week, but I, I see certain parts of that team that that gets better. Um, this game. They 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 took over pretty much. Christian Powell did his thing. Even Michael Malley, I mean not Michael Malley, but even the quarterback um, Baker. He Baker Jonathan Baker. He scrambled for a touchdown. I mean they just looked they looked like a better team. Um, the Royals, you know they 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 just don't have it in certain spots on their team, and it shows. Um, but I do think the Crocodiles uh, uh, is a team that, that people are really going to have to watch when it comes to playoff time. Unless they have some major injuries, man, I'm t- telling you, the Crocodiles is going to be in the mix. From how I see them play every week, if they can get more consistent on defense and that offense keeps keeps making plays, a double pass, can anybody stop the double pass? The double pass <laughs> every damn <laughs> game. Every game, bro. Like It's like, can anybody stop the double pass? I know Christian Powell is such a threat when he's outside, um, but somebody, somebody has, has, to, has to play the double pass. But um, the Crocs game, it was just – Crocs made all the plays they needed to make. Um, the Royals made a few. They didn't look that bad. But the Crocs came out on top and you can't take nothing away from them. I think this is one of those games where, I mean, you're looking at fourth and fifth place right here. So th- this was the, you know, who's going to make that push for the playoffs. And when they play each other again, it's going to be the same feeling to the game. What I love about the Crocs is, I mean, obviously, hey, we're going to do a double pass Spency Cutlin with the 71 yarder to Stefani Fortes. That's just what they do now. Earlier in the season, I saw them do trick plays and like, okay, they're just, you know, putting out their shot. But they practice these plays. They believe in this and this is part of their offense. Like you said, when Christian Powell's out at receiver, you got to watch them because they have situations in this game where uh, Powell and Stefani Fortes switch spots. And I'm like, mm. oh, shit, are they going to give Stefani the ball? And then they run a jailbreak screen for Christian Powell. I'm like, how the fuck are you going to stop that? It's not like a five-wide set where you're like, okay, where well, I'm looking for the receivers. They put one of their most dynamic receivers at running back. And I'm like, they give him the ball. What is he going to do? And I, I actually forgot about Powell. And then he gets the ball on a screen. And that's how their offense is set up is Christian Powell is what makes it go. But they have the the complementary parts now that you have to respect what that offense is doing and mm-hmm. how they do it. They run screens, they run double passes, they run basic runs and counters when you don't expect them to. I know head coach Michael Maddenley has a, a little bit to do with it, and so did Jonathan Baker with the offensive coordination. And they actually have an actual offensive coordinator who used that I can't remember his name, but I know he used to be the head coach. For the crocodiles, those three heads together creating this offense has been exciting to watch. And the only drawback I'm gonna say about the crocodiles, and I'm gonna keep saying this until they prove me wrong, is they don't have an it factor. They're missing that little bit of you know what? I know I'm good, but I'm not gonna let you think that you're as good as me. Because in this game, the Royals should not have been within a touchdown of, of winning this game. Like it should not. The score was way too close. There were situations, there was that fumble where the Royals scooped and scored. There was a few drives mm-hmm. where the Royals' offense really should not have got plays done, but they did. The Cardinals' defense is wildly inconsistent in the back end, and that, that to me, is a, a, a telltale sign of a team that doesn't know how good they want to be yet. But a win is a win. Shit, y'all looking like the better team. I'm not, I'm not even going to say anything about the Royals. I mean... Yeah. Going forward, I am pretty sure that the Royals are going to get another American because Josh Davis left. So, and I think like two other like EU imports left too. So, left, 
got fired, whatever. They're not on the team. I'm not going to go over semantics. So I do expect the Royals to have a different look the next time these two teams play. And I think it's going to be a similar scoring situation. I think one touchdown is what really separates these two teams. Up next, I have a chat with Christian Powell from the Crocodiles about his team's win. All right, I have with me here, running back from the Cineoe Crocodiles, Christian Powell. What's going on, Christian? Welcome to the AFF Podcast. What's going on, man? All good. Appreciate you for having me on here. Anytime, my good man. Anytime. So we want to talk about the Botnia Bowl that you guys just won. Just first off, 234 yards. Ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Second, let's just get into some of the questions. How were y'all able to be successful on the offensive side of the ball in this game? Uh, yeah, man, it's all all good. That was that was a big one. That's a blessing to do that. And uh, just all starts, uh, that all started up front. We knew how big this game was going into it. Uh, we knew we had to put some points on the board. And uh, I feel like everybody just, everybody just took that in. So it all, just as a unit, we kind of, work together and just knowing that it was a big game coming off of a big break. So glad it just all clicked and worked together. All right, man. I was going to ask some like basic questions, but I changed my mind and I'm going to ask the real questions. The real question is what is going on with y'all offensive plays? How many trick plays do y'all have and how often are y'all going to be running them for the rest of the year? That first play from Spencer to Stefani, that was crazy. And you've already thrown a touchdown pass yourself. Is this what the Crocodiles are all about this year? Going for the gusto from the very beginning of every game? <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there, uh, those were a couple of trick plays. Uh, you know, Coach talked about he wanted to run, opening up a few games uh, just to make things a little interesting, catch people off guard. But, uh, you know, I feel like with every offensive playbook, there are trick plays in there. Some get ran, some don't. So, uh, so far, we've just ran a couple of them. And uh, going forward, if um, they find their way out, uh, we'll run them. But it's not like something that, that has to be ran. Other than what Coach said, you know, there was a couple specific times that he did want to run some. And then, so, yeah, we just uh, put those out there, make things a little interesting. And big shout out to Spencer for doing that. Uh, that was a good ball by him. Good catch run by Steph, and uh, glad that just worked out how it was supposed to. We talked about it, uh, ran it a few times, practiced it, and uh, they did they did good. So in this one, the game was kind of close. I mean, early on, it looked like y'all were going to, you know, route them, but then their offense started to get rolling. Your offense stalled just a little bit in the second half. What did the Royals defense do that kind of made you guys have to switch what you were doing up and eventually score at the end of the game and make sure you got the win. Well, after halftime, they went in, uh, made some some adjustments based off of, off of what we were doing. So, you know, uh, gave us some different looks, which we had to adjust off of. But a lot of it just comes down to execution. You know, um, being in there, as many trips as we had in the red zone, uh, a lot of those turned into field goals, which... Uh, Kind of, kind of where we stalled out in the red zone. So it's just more about execution when we get down there and putting up six instead of uh, going for three every time. But uh, you know, we talked about it, watched the film, figure it out, uh, fix what we need to fix, and uh, move forward. Uh, just work on executing and being more consistent down there. So ultimately, you guys got the win, and that's really that. That's all that really counts. But in this game, you know, it was tight going going down to the very end of the game. What would you consider the defining moment in this game? What would be the moment that you, like, knew that, okay, we're going to win this game? Yeah, like you said, this one was very close and went all the way down to the wire. And uh, we knew that that last score that we got, that, was a, that gave us a real nice cushion. But really, it was when just the defense – we knew defense has to go out there and make one more stop. And uh, when they did that – when they went out there, that final possession, got the final stop, uh, we knew we were in a pretty good position. And as an offense, we just had to bleed the clock out a little bit. So, yeah, I would say um, just 
when the defense went out there, that final possession got the final stop that we needed, and players just stepped up, made plays when they needed to, which was huge. All right, let's let's get back to you in this game. Uh, there was that one run where it looked like you ran up the middle and you were tackled or there was a lot of people around and all of a sudden you just shot out of there. Like your linemen like kept you up or, or they missed tackles or something. What was going on in your mind during that play? Like go through that play. Like what was happening when you ran through that whatever pile of people and then just burst out of there for a touchdown? Yeah, it was just uh, stay up and keep the keep the feet moving. Uh, so I was doing, I know it was a lot of people um, just looked up. Still had my balance if we were going, so I just and I seen a seen a big hole, and next thing I know, I'm running for 20 yards. So it was definitely a definitely a special play. Had some help from some linemen. So yeah, it was a it was a good one. It was a it was a surprising one, and even going back and seeing the clip of it, uh, yeah, it was just a, overall a good play though. Surprised myself a bit um, running through just with all those bodies in there, and then just to look up and. See, see that I was still running with the with none but green grass in front of me. It's funny that you say you surprise yourself because I'm not surprised at all. That's kind of been your thing both last year and this year. I mean, even looking at some of your highlights, your highlight tape is going to be crazy because a lot of what you do is breaking tackles and not going down on the first, second, or third attempt. Uh, just want to let you know that's freaking awesome, and we're glad that you are giving us highlights here in Finland. But last thing I was going to ask you, you guys got a bye week now, but when you come back from the bye week, you're going against the Steelers. and You know who the Steelers are. So during this bye week and leading up to that game, what is you guys' focus going to be on to make sure you can get a, come away with a win in that one? Yeah, I appreciate that. It's all good. It's all fun. But yeah, coming off, we know the Steelers are a tough opponent. So we just, uh, we have to come out this bye week, focus up, uh, focus on what we need to work on, improvements from last week, uh, what worked, what didn't work, and really just just work on capitalizing, being consistent. And um, yeah, just really just focus up as a team, as a unit. And just kind of come together to play because we know it'll be a tough week. We know uh, we know how big the game is coming off of Biden. And after that, we have a seven-game stretch. So, uh, yeah, this is really our lives just to come together. Um, just, just work on what we need to work on. I think that's the biggest thing, just working on what we need to work on and focus on those points. Really maximize our opportunities and minimize our, our mistakes. All right, Christian Pop, thanks for coming on to the AFF podcast. We really appreciate you answering these questions for us today. I uh, wish you and the uh, San Diego Crocodiles the best of luck going forward. Um, looking forward to seeing you go against the Steelers in two weeks when y'all come off your bye, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on here. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to a good season coming up. We're going to talk about the last game of the weekend. Porvo Butchers beat the Tampa the Saints twenty-seven to fourteen. What are your thoughts on that one, Q? Um, that was actually I wouldn't say exciting game, but it was it was pretty uh, good to watch, entertaining. It was some great weather out in Tampa. Always Dayton win. Love it out. Oh yeah, always. It's always sunny in Tampa. Uh, mm-hmm. Dayton win showed up to play. Miko Seppinen got an end zone. Uh, I guess he heard me talking about him uh, before. The Saints new new uh, imports was there offensively. Still looks, I mean, it looks a, a little better than what we've seen before, um, but they're just missing. I mean, it's just they're just trying to make something happen. They did put some points on the board, um, but the Butchers, obviously, I think are a better, well-put-together team than the Saints. Um, from week to week, we never know which Butchers team yeah, uh, that's for we're sure. going to get, though. You know, um, just so happened this week, we got the one that, that was ready to make plays. Um, even on defense, they got turnovers. Um this game was was just what we what I thought it would be. I thought that, um, the Butchers were, were going to win. The Saints just, you know, they're fighting. The Saints are fighting to just just do what they can um, to only lose. I think by two touchdowns. Yeah. Um, that's you know that's not nothing to you know to to be happy about or sad about necessarily. Um, in their situation, I mean, they just changed imports. So um, the Saints will just have to find a way to win ball games. Um, they're going to have to do everything, add a little more to the offense, um, get a lot of better import play from from both sides of the uh of the ball on um, the butchers just 
keep doing what they do. You know, they're an exciting team to watch. It's almost like you root for them without even knowing it. Um, because because they're so they don't have the talent that most teams have, mm-hmm. but they still somehow some way winning games. You gotta you gotta just gotta be happy about that because at the end of the day, all you have to be is in the top four. So mm-hmm. you don't you don't have to look so great in the first five, six, seven games. If you make those playoffs, anything can happen. So um, definitely shout out to the to the butchers for for taking over and winning that game. Yeah, when when it comes to the butchers, uh, there's one constant. They might play great, they might play bad, you never know. But you know this much. If you get the ball to Dayton win, something's going to happen. Either he's going to catch the ball and get yards, or he's going to run the ball and get yards. This game, he had 200 yards rushing. They they fed the man. And he actually got some in-between tackles yards in this game as well. He did some tough running for them. Just showed a little bit of versatility for a, a more of a scat back type of guy. I mean, but his speed is still his number one weapon. I think the Butchers are still trying to figure out how they want to do things, both with their offense and their defense, trying to figure out that complement. Because with their offense, it, it there's some times where this offense can like really just highlight and get a good explosive series going, and then their defense will go out and crap the bed. And then yep. you have the same thing, vice versa. Nico Royko makes a hell of a play, and then the offense doesn't capitalize. That complement football is what they need to work on to be more consistent. That's what's going to separate them from those other two middle of the pack teams that we just talked about with the Crocodiles and the Royals. I mean, it is what it is. There's a top three teams, and then there's everybody else, and then there's the Saints. And the Butchers, Mm -hmm. they don't want to be where the Saints are, and they proved that in this game that they're the better team, obviously. But, again, the Saints, they're getting used to those imports. A couple weeks and a little bit of practice, that game could have went another way because the Butchers weren't going to be able to just, you know, totally outplay them. Like you said, talent-wise, they are lacking in some spots. When it comes to the Saints, shit, the last two weeks they look good with these new imports. Not, Not good enough to win, but good enough that you don't feel, like, sorry that they're playing on the same field as these teams, you know? You feel like Mm -hmm. this is a team that if they really had to, they could pull something out of their butt and steal a game. I think this Saints team, just just looking at the imports they brought in and what they have going on right now, you got two imports that can play both ways, and you got a quarterback who can throw and run. They remind me – very much of last year's Steelers team when it comes to their imports and the importance of the imports. Those two yes. guys, um, Munchie Roberts and CJ, I can't pronounce your last name, my African brother, but uh, <laughs> those two guys, they have to be more than just imports. They have to be star players, game changers, every game. And once they figure out how to utilize them in that aspect, they'll be able to make up some ground on teams like the Butchers and the Royals that they have the talent that's similar. But honestly, without them using those imports to the highest level, they won't get anything out of it. That was the problem with the first set of imports they had was that the imports were playing like, you know, I play one position. That's not the case. The Saints need you to play three positions and be the best at the three positions. Munchie Roberts is, is leading the team in tackles since he got here. Oh, wow. I don't even think he played defense last time he was with the um, Eagles. And I know he's a receiver out of college. So that's him being on another level. Even CJ, I'm pretty sure he's a defensive guy. But he's playing a little bit of running back. And he's a dynamic returner for him. That's what they have to do to, to continue and to get better. And But hats off to Jake Hill for being able to put together something with this squad that he has so last minute and with so much change in parts. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a good game. Um, Shit, I'm I'm over this game now, but, I mean, all the games are pretty good this weekend besides that first one. Yeah, I agree. And that's what we thought it was going to be. These are all games where you have one and two playing each other, four and five playing each other, and then uh, six and seven playing each other. So they were pretty much what you expected. Except for that first one. Get it off your chest. Well, it's that time. Now we're going to say what's on our minds and get it off your chest. What do you want to get off your chest this week, Q? Oh, man. What do I want to get off my chest this week? 
first I want to give a shout out. This is more of giving a shout out. Yeah, give a shout I'm out. Giving a shout, I'm giving shout out to to my boy Luke out there in Italy. Luke uh, Zaraka. Luke. You know, I am a fan of uh, that team. Um, I, I became a fan probably within the last like two years, three years. But um, shout out to Luke, man. Shout out. I already shout out Sean Shelton last week. So, you know, those guys are, are premier quarterbacks in Europe. Nothing but love to them. They always they all good guys, man. So I didn't really have much on my chest, man. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to those guys and let them know that, hey, it's a lot of people over here that, that watch you guys and that's cheering for you guys. And I hope that the rest of Europe understands that too. And uh, I just like to see the good football. You know, the top 25 came back out. Yeah, and, boy. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people so solidified their place. Oh, yeah. Another shout out to my boy Deontay Battle. Yeah. Winning another championship out there in Poland, too. So, yeah. you know, a, a lot of big things happening for a lot of guys we know and communicate with. So, just uh, for everybody else that's still playing, man, keep keep doing your thing. Keep balling now. Well, shoot, shit, I want to give shout outs too, goddamn. You okay, know, okay. Oslo, Oslo Vikings got the dub this weekend. Shout out to head coach Derek Mann. Also, shout out to the, the runner ups in that game. Uh, Q's ex teammate Michael Hall playing quarterback yeah, and linebacker out, out there. Looking real thick. He played pretty well too. Yeah, look at and they, had, they had him on the run. It was 14 6 going into the fourth quarter. But, yeah, they play well, and it's good to see those guys out there living in – both of those are two American guys uh, living out in, in Norway, doing their thing, playing at the highest level and coaching at the highest level. And then shout-out to uh, – actually, just shout-out to the whole Stockholm Mean Machines team. You know, those are my people. I go out there once a year, hang out with those imports. I could name almost their whole team, so I won't. But uh, big yeah, shout-out to – I'm a Crusaders fan. So I'm a Crusaders fan, so we got to stop you right in the middle of this, sir. Shout out to the Crusaders <laughs> as well, because you know <laughs> Philip Julian, uh, Emil Knudsen, uh, Shazan Mumphrey, all them guys too. Them my peoples as well. <laughs> you know, and both of the, if you're in a Nordic country and you probably one of the top teams, I fucks with you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm with you. And so um, I didn't go into Italy, but you know, Luke as well. Um, the Poland teams, I'm not as out there, but I know Deontay and Tony Dawson as well. It's really good that all these games are happening now because this is going to help us segue. All eyes on Finland now. Nobody else is playing. Yeah. The only, there's only two other leagues playing. AFL, which is Austria. GFL, they're on a break until the end of this month. And Finland. So... Finland, everybody is watching you. If you're playing in the Maple League, everybody is watching you. Because um, the Austrian League, they're in playoffs right now, but you know there's only so many games you can watch on the weekend. Last weekend, I watched three on Saturday because there was that many championships. So now all eyes mm -hmm. on you, Finland. And like Q said, that top 25 came out. Uh, Finland, you, we got three teams on there. Three teams. Steelers holding on at 25. Uh, Wolverines actually went up to, excuse me, to 19. I think last time they only had played one game, so now they actually look like a top 20 team. And the Roosters are at number 11, which they they look like they deserve that right now, especially after that last game. So, yeah, you know, if people think these are inflated teams or they think that, you know, somebody like the Crocodiles or the Royals should be on the list as well, you, the next three or four weeks – everybody's going to be watching Finland. So, you know, shout out to Finland too. Shit. <laughs> holla, holla. It's time for fan shout outs. Let's do a little fan shout outs. We haven't had any fan shout outs lately because we haven't been doing any shows. That's our fault. But we're back now. We're being more consistent. So every week you can send an email to me at perfectpurpose at gmail.com. Stating anything that's on your mind about football in Finland. And we'll read it on the show if it's interesting enough. We won't be reading any of that malicious or downright stupid stuff, so don't waste your, your time with the trolling. But please include your name and city in the email. And again, if you missed it, that's perfectpurvis, that's my name, at gmail.com. And if you can't remember it, check out the show description and add at gmail.com to my name. No spaces. All right. <laughs> We'll see y'all next week. Send us some email. God damn it. I check my email every day. Yeah. Send us some.
<laughs> Cheers to the freaking weekend. Maple League teams are back in action on Thursday with the Steelers versus Wolverines, then the Royals at Saints on Friday, and Butchers versus Roosters play on Saturday. Later today, our panel of football experts will pick winners for this week's game. Right now, Finland Suwami is in the lead. He's 14 and 4, while everyone else is 13 and 5. So it's still anybody's game. I just don't know when we're going to start everybody picking different picks because it's been pretty close almost every week now. One wrong pick is all it takes. But those picks. I think this oh, is the week. This the week? <laughs> this oh, yeah. the week, right? Steelers, Wolverines, Royal Saints. I don't know. I, I feel like only one game we're going to all pick different people. I think it's Steelers and Saints. No, yeah, Steelers, and, um, Steelers Wolverines. Wolverines. That's the only one that we might. Split I think the hair. Saints and Royals. I think Saints Royals game might be up up in there. You gonna pick how the I feel right now? Well, I mean, I mean, if if, if they play the way they should, well, yeah, it could be up in the air. Could be up in the air. All right, so uh, those picks can be found on the Podium Facebook page, the Perfect Purpose Facebook page, and the Perfect Purpose website. Get those up to you later today. What are you excited about between these three games, Q? Uh, more than anything, obviously the Wolverines and the um, Steelers. Um, we've seen these guys play each other before. Uh, didn't look – it was after a break. Um, didn't look good for the Corpio. Um, but they've had time to to readjust. And now the Wolverines coming off this loss, um, it'll be exciting to see how confident Corpio is now. And it'll see if, if the Wolverines adjust or will they just – you know, like it is what it is, and will they crumble? I don't say crumble, but you know how it goes sometimes when, when you got so many egos on the team, and you can either forget about that loss and, and show up to play against Corpio and show them that you are the team that that you guys you know proclaim to be, or or the Corpio can come out here and do some and do some things because now obviously Corpio gets to play at home, and that's a big thing for them. Um, so that's the game I'm looking forward to seeing. It's Thursday too, and uh, I have nothing to do Thursday, so <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to that game. I think that's that's the anticipated game right there. Yeah, I think that game is a big one too. But interesting thing for me is that because we just talked about this with the Wolverines, you know, um, the Wolverines played the Roosters, and there was a lot of balls thrown in number 37. Well, last time the Wolverines played the Steelers. There were a lot of balls thrown in number 37. Now, the difference in the two games is that the Steelers kept throwing fades and Irvin kept breaking them up just over and over. He broke them up, broke them up, broke them up. Never let his receiver catch those balls. Now, when the Roosters did it, the receiver was better. Now, my my real question is, do you think that the Steelers are going to just go back at that again and be like, well, the Wolverines got them this time. Maybe we can get them next time. I th- I think I think Corpio, uh, which what I would do against the Wolverines uh, secondary is, is I think their corners are strong point mm-hmm. and their safeties is questionable. So um, I think Tino will, will, have, will get a lot more balls this game in the slot. Um, I think uh, Gerard will actually probably catch some balls out of the backfield. I think they'll feature him more. See how their offensive plays. See how their offensive line plays. I know the Wolverines will have a few people out. Um, so let's see if 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 it, if it makes a difference when it comes to their total team play. Um, but right now, the Thursday games, uh, no team likes to play on Thursday. Uh, oh, for one, it's a short, it's a short day. week. It's hard to get people to practice um, when you when when you you know it's like a you don't have much time to prepare. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that this is real, real important um, for the Wolverines and and Corpio because uh, it's two things can happen: the Wolverines can come out and get up and it'll get ugly early, or Corpio comes to play you know at home. And, and they make the Wolverines come from behind. So it, it can go either way. And I'm, I'm just excited to see a good game. The other game that I think is going to be a little bit interesting, the Butchers versus Roosters, I don't know why, but I contacted a few Roosters about doing a pregame interview, and I've already had like two guys tell me that they're not even going to the game. So uh, this might be a trap game for the Roosters. Because like you said earlier, the Butchers, they can, they can play well if they really need to or want to. And mm. I really hope that the Roosters aren't sleeping on them. Don't sleep on them. I don't care what nobody say. The most successful franchise in the Maple League, Helsinki Roosters, give you that. But right behind their asses, Corvo Butcher. Corvo, Corvo. You can't yep. ever tell. And Yimmy Rocco, that's my boy, head coach. 
he don't give no fucks neither. He will do whatever it takes to beat the Roosters if he if he feels it's in their power. And I believe I believe the Butchers are gonna try to give him everything, the whole kitchen sink. Cause this for them after that win against the Wolverines, this is the perfect opportunity to catch them napping. Is that not what they did with the Steelers? No, nah, you're right. Yep. Steelers beat the Roosters, set their quarterback down against the Butchers, and and Butchers gave gave them the business. So I definitely hope the Roosters don't take this game too lightly. That's it for the, the weekend. It's going to be great. The hot seat. Let's get on the AFL hot seat. This is new to the season, but Q and I will take turns sitting on it each week. On the hot seat, you have 60 seconds to answer as many questions truthfully as you can. These questions can be about anything. They're not limited to football or this show. Also, we do not know what the questions the other will ask, so they're 100% off the rip. Today, Q is on the hot seat, and I wanted yes, to say back what I said about 60 seconds, because shit, we just want to make sure we get some good questions in. All right? <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. First question. If the Maple League season was over today, who is the Maple League MVP? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. If the Maple League was over today, MVP in my book would be uh, Dayton Win. All right, next question. Which championship is more impressive? Milano Seaman in Italy, Oslo Vikings in Norway, Stockholm Mean Machine in Sweden, or Warsaw Panthers in uh, Poland? I'm going to go Stockholm Mean Machine. Um, if you know anything about Sweden, Carl Stead was running it for years. Now the stock, the Mean Machine have came back. Now they want, what, two back-to-back now? So, so I'll say that, that. That means more. How much did you drink this weekend in Finland? Oh, um, I drank a lot of tequila. <laughs> uh, if I had to put it in liters, I'd probably <laughs> say I, I drank at least probably two liters okay. in, in about three days. Yeah. All right. Do you believe the Team USA women's soccer team should be paid as much as the men? Um, hmm. It's a hot topic I, right now. I, it's a hot topic right there. Um, to say that they should be paid as much is a little bit much mm-hmm. um, because it's just all about market. Um, I just think men's soccer is, is a bigger platform. Not saying that women shouldn't get paid the same as much as, as the men's player, but I think their market is bigger. I think they have more fans. And uh, it's, uh, whew, it's a hard one to say. <laughs> I think, like, I, I feel bad saying I don't think they should make as much. I think I wish they could make as much. I, I, don't, I, I can't really answer that like I want to. What's something you think all people should experience in their lifetime? Uh, being broke, <laughs> I think. I think uh, uh, <laughs> being broke, a uh, simple fact of that is, is um, to see that survival skill in humans mm-hmm. um, kick in. People people change when they broke. Mentally, they it, it drives some people and some people, cr- you know, crumble. That you can learn a lot about yourself when you're broke. Is it easier to hate or love? Oh, <sighs> For me, it's easier to love. Um, if I had to ask, if I had to answer for the majority, um, I would probably say hate. A lot of people feel like you need to know or be involved with somebody to love them, but to hate, you don't have to know them at all. I think it's it's, it's just as easy, or it should be just as easy to love too. I mean, you don't have to. I always say to how to judge a person is how they treat people they don't know. If, if you can love people that you don't know as much as somebody you do, then why are manhole covers round? <laughs> Ooh. Now that's a good one right there, brother. Um, if I had to make uh I mean that's a great one. If I had to, if I had to make a guess why manhole covers well, for one I'll go with the name, the uh manhole, and, it, and most of the manholes that we have on a, on a man is round. <laughs> so so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go that route. Uh, it's a hole. I haven't seen I haven't seen people call a rectangle a hole. Yeah. If they had a rectangle, you know, I never heard that. So I guess I don't know. <laughs> okay, I, there's actually an answer to this one. So the answer is actually is the only shape that it can't fall through itself. Who wins in a fight between the Avengers and the Justice League? <laughs> I'm gonna go Avengers. Even ignoring the movies, I think they're superheroes and they just have better superpowers than like <laughs> um, the Justice League is like it's like the A team of, of movies <laughs> to me. It's like a, just a bunch of names, but uh, but nobody who really can stand on their own. All right, next question: If you're about to get into a fight, what song comes on as your soundtrack? I'm a maniac, maniac. <laughs> <laughs> 
Last question on the high seat. For one million dollars, you have to sing one song without making any mistakes on the lyric. What song are you singing? Ooh, what song am I singing? If I had, a, I'm gonna have to go Amazing Grace. <laughs> mm. Give us a sample. Give us a sample. <laughs> All you need to go is Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I can go through the whole first verse and we can get it on. Give me my money. <laughs> All right, that's the hot seat. That's it for us this week on the AFF. Q, any last words before we get out of here? Uh, no, that's it, man. It's been a great day, and uh, let's get to some football this weekend. All right. So we hope everybody enjoyed the show and will support us by subscribing or following AFF on the Apple Podcast, Google Play, and Podbean. I keep saying I'm going to sign us up on Supla, but I keep forgetting to do it. But whatever. There's other platforms out there that still our um, feed anyway because we got an RSS feed. So just show us some love. Like us. Follow all the social media stuff. Whatever you got to do. And as long as you do it, never forget T-I-F. We go. Duh. American Football in Finland.